Hey now, welcome to this month's webinar. We're talking paper cut in the legal market. We've brought this up before, yet a lot of people still equate paper cut with education. There's a compelling story that we have in the educational market, of course, since paper cut is easy to deploy and use, and you hear the story of how paper cut got started 20 years ago by a part-time network engineer and his friend in Australia. Plus, you know with paper cut, it just works. So why wouldn't it be used in other vertical markets? Well, it is, and it's being sold by very savvy account managers that know that paper cut isn't just for education. There's a lot to talk about with the legal market, and we're going to cover the steps needed to set up a typical law firm during the oh, next 20 minutes or so. Pay attention and you might win a very cool ACDI t-shirt or polo by answering a trivia question at the end of the presentation. Casey Cobb is helping me out answering chats and q and I'm Doc Balgi. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I think you'll be surprised as to how easy it is to use paper cut in the legal market. Setting up paper cut in a law firm is not difficult at all. We're going to cover what it takes to complete a successful installation. We'll cover network configurations, how to charge back print, copy, and scan jobs to a client matter. I have the forgotten task of set up to discuss, and then we'll go over the installation and configuration of Papercut. The biggest hint that I can give you is preparation. It's not a lot, so if you take a little bit of time on the front end, you can cruise through the process easily and with confidence. I have specific preparation for a legal deployment coming up, but first, I want to address preparation as a whole. I've said it several times, and will repeat this best practice tip. It's really easy, and this is what you should do before any paper cut install. Get the devices in and on the network printing as normal. I also recommend hardening the device, turning off protocols that aren't needed, turn off Bonjour, Mopria, direct Wi-Fi printing, all the things that an end user could circumvent to get around the benefits of having paper cut. Plus, your network will be more secure anyway, so hardening is a good thing. And now that everything is working the way it should, let's prepare for paper cut. Before we install paper cut, let's verify system requirements. First, the operating system. Paper cut can be installed on Windows, Mac, Linux, and Novell, but is the specific version supported? Double check the knowledge base, www.papercut.com slash KB and do a search for system requirements. Each user should have their own domain account and password. By default, Papercut does not maintain its own list of users and passwords and instead uses the operating system logon accounts. And Papercut can synchronize with many directory services including Google's G Suite. You'll want to have the username and password for both network and local admin accounts for the install. I would also suggest that you talk about a password for the Papercut admin account so you're ready during configuration. Papercut works with any PostScript, PCL5, or PCL6 printer driver, plus many other PDLs. Search the knowledge base for supported printers, and you'll get a list of all compatible printer drivers. Now, determine where you're going to install the Papercut application server software. If you have a typical network environment like this, print drivers installed on the workstations with a print server hosting the queues for the MFDs, then best practice is to install on this server as well. You can separate it and run it on a different server, but why? Papercut is Service Oriented Architecture, or SOA, so it's not a heavy application. Search the knowledge base for sizing guide for RAM and CPU recommendations. Also, Papercut best practice is to install on a virtual server for easy scaling and quick backup and restore. Now, if you don't have a print server, install the application server on any server. 
You also need to install the direct print monitor on each computer. If this is a small office, then this server could even be a Windows 10 box over in the corner somewhere. You know, it doesn't even have to be Windows. You could build a low-cost Linux box to run PaperCut. You might even want to check with your RSM or RSS for availability of something like that from ACDI. Many lawyers like Macs, and we have all Mac installs running a PaperCut as well. That's a real differentiator with PaperCut. We speak Mac. Now, before I install PaperCut, I like to have a discussion of print costs so I know what's needed ahead of time. Back in the old days, when I saved this for time of install, just this piece of information can go through all sorts of conversations, so I get it out beforehand. Don't waste pro-service time on this. There are a few different ways to configure pricing. You can just put a simple price per page and be done. Probably better to provide a different price for color and grayscale, and that's done using the standard setup. Set the price for different paper types and provide a discount for duplex printing to help promote good printing behavior. Don't forget about wide formats and plotters. Many law firms have these to create exhibits of all kinds, and you can set up pricing by paper area to account for this activity. Here's another preparation step. Client matter lists. How are they doing this today? Is there another software they're using that contains this info? You'll want to prepare customer or client accounts to add them into the system. An export from a finance package is an excellent source, and it might be automated. Search the knowledge base for integrations to see what's available. If you don't see it on the list, then don't worry. Contact your ACDI representative because we have developers on staff, and with a little bit of information, we can determine whether or not we can integrate into any system. If you only have a small number of accounts, then it's easy to manually add them, or we can use a spreadsheet to import. Now, we'll look at that a little bit later during configuration. The firm might also use codes, either as a security option or as another identifier of the client matter. PaperCut can also be designed to use these codes, either making them visible or not, depending on requirement, so you're not limited to just a naming convention. And I would also recommend a PaperCut test account, so you do not affect any real users. PaperCut calls this next step the forgotten task. And if you search that phrase in the knowledge base, Windows Q security is one of the top hits. When using secure print release or account selection pop-ups, PaperCut pauses jobs on the Windows print queue prior to printing. It's important that the queue is secured to prevent users from resuming jobs themselves and bypassing PaperCut. Now, there are two ways a Windows print queue can be secured. You can restrict the print queue security permissions to prevent users from performing management functions, or configure the queue using the PaperCut TCP slash IP port. Now, to restrict security permissions for a queue, you're going to log in as an administrator to the server hosting the printers. This is in Windows. You'll open the printer configuration screen at start slash printers or use the print management utility built into Windows. Right click a printer, then printer properties and click the security tab. Select the creator owner user. In the permissions area, clear both the allow and deny checkboxes for manage documents and click OK. Perform these steps for each of the monitored printers. Great, you know, you've just added a nice layer of security, and it's easily done. Now for the installation of PaperCut. Seven steps. Double-click the installation package and accept the agreement. Read the installation information if need be. Select the installation location. Select the default standard installation primary server. Select whether or not you want to create a desktop shortcut. Check the installation review, and then click Install. Now, 
This process typically only takes about 15 minutes. There are a few variables, especially on print servers with many queues, as PaperCut is automatically adding the printers to the interface. It's, it's so cool and streamlined. Your preparation has been completed. We've just installed the software, so we're ready to configure. You know what? We'll have this done in no time. First off is to enter a password for the PaperCut admin. Now, it's a good thing you had this ready. Six character minimum. You can also change the system's physical location and language on the screen. Next is organizational type. There's three choices, education, corporate, or professional. Now, it has nothing to do with the license you purchased. This is a template to make it easier to deploy paper cut. Here are our default print costs. Pop in the values you discussed prior to installing for color and grayscale. We'll put in the other values after this installation configuration. PaperCut extracts user information out of your user directory. PaperCut automatically tries to detect the available directory services, saving you hours of configuration time. However, you can change the user source with a convenient dropdown. Current versions will now also allow you to skip this step if you're not ready. Perhaps you need a certificate of some kind, but you should have vetted that out in the preparation step. Many directories provide the option of users and groups. However, keep in mind that only Windows Active Directory provides full support for organizational units, nested groups, and other AD features. Then you're going to confirm your settings. There's an option to go back to previous screens if need be. But if you're all set, then confirm. Larger networks might take a few minutes to synchronize the users, but in most cases it doesn't take very long. Select whether or not you wish to share system usage data with PaperCut to help make the software better, and then press Login. You are up and running already tracking print jobs through the server if you're set up that way. And as you notice, the graph is waiting for some data. It takes three days before you'll start to see something showing up in that section. Everything else will be in real time. There are some hints at the top that help guide you through the interface intuitively. Click the Users tab to see who was synchronized. Use filters as needed. Printers are the same way. Click on the tab and view a list of everything that PaperCut is looking at, all done in a pretty short period of time. A computer with a direct print monitor installed needs to communicate on the port used by the application server. By default, that port is 9191. Ensure that any firewall software on the primary application server is not set to block any incoming local network traffic on this port. And you can see where the path is to the software self-contained inside of your install of PaperCut. The direct print monitor configuration file is automatically generated with the host name of the application server when the application server is installed. If required, you can change the default configuration. However, the default configuration suits most implementations. For example, you can change the IP address of the application server to a fully qualified domain name. Install the software from the workstation by navigating to the folder and running the installer. It takes just a couple of minutes and then log into the PaperCut dashboard to confirm that you can see the new linked printer in the list. The user client may also need to be deployed if you want to provide system messages to the user, maybe provide a last chance mechanism for print jobs, or if you need to select a shared account to associate a client matter with a print job. I have the path listed here for Windows. Do keep in mind that there are Mac and Linux installers available too, and they work. As stated before, PaperCut does have working installers for both Mac and Linux operating systems, so we are completely neutral. For Windows, the client has an MSI package, so you can deploy with group policies. You can also deploy with a login script or simply browse to the folder in PaperCut from the workstation as it is a pre-shared folder so you can access it quickly. By default, PaperCut uses an internal database product known as Apache Derby. You might, however, consider running PaperCut on an external relational database management system. That's a mouthful. We just call it RDBMS. 
Now, you'll want to do that if you have existing database infrastructure and you want to consolidate all applications on the same database platform. Or maybe you have an existing database maintenance and backup procedure. You want PaperCut to take advantage of this. Perhaps you're using third-party reporting and analysis tools like Crystal Reports or Microsoft Access to view and analyze the PaperCut database, or in a very large environment that requires the performance benefits of a dedicated RDBMS, so that will be advantageous as well. So this also allows the database to reside on a separate server to PaperCut, which improves the system scalability. Detailed instructions on upsizing the database are contained in the knowledge base and vary depending on the database being deployed. True to PaperCut's nature, we can use SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, and many others so network admins aren't limited in their preferred database choice. Now that everything is installed and running from a high level, let's drill down some more on configuration. We'll start with some more details on shared accounts, which allow you to tag print jobs with client matter data for chargebacks. PaperCut has two types of accounts, personal accounts and shared accounts. Personal accounts are automatically created when users are imported into the system. Shared accounts can be created manually in the admin web interface on an as-needed basis, or if you have a large number of accounts, you can automate the account creation process. You should have a list of shared accounts that you created in the preparation stage of your implementation. Now, some uses of shared accounts would include allocating and budget printing by business areas, you know, like a cost center, uh, you can use it to track printing by project, phase, client, or account. And in this particular instance, we'll track printing by client and matter, which is very popular in legal and accounting firms. The PaperCut Knowledge Base has the details on a tab delimited file that's used to batch import accounts. In the PaperCut interface, you'll want to go to Accounts, Batch Import, Update. Import your TSV by browsing to the location on your computer and click import. You know, TSV files are easily created in Excel. You just save your file as text, tab delimited, and you're ready to go. If your accounts have a tiered structure, you can prevent users from charging to the parent code or the client and ensuring that a child code or matter is selected. Here's a screenshot of the form to manually create a shared account. All you really need is the account name. PaperCut has a few other options you can configure quickly and easily on this interface. No matter how the account gets created, you will then need to apply security rights to the account so that only the right people have access to the right accounts to charge back to. By default, no users are automatically granted access to accounts you must manually allow access to accounts. You also need to update the new account creation rules so that all staff are automatically granted access to any future accounts. So to grant access to existing accounts, you're going to click the Accounts tab. In the Actions menu, click Bulk Account Actions. In the Change Security Settings area, select the Add Security Group checkbox and then select All Users. Click OK. To grant access to any new accounts created in the future, go ahead and click the Accounts tab and select the Template account. Click the Security tab, and in the Groups area, select the All Users group, and then click Add. The Direct Print Monitor intelligently creates printers on the Application Server printer list. It creates one printer with multiple print queues, that is, one from each computer. Every print queue with an IP address or host name that matches the printer is linked to the printer. Linking the print queues to a printer allows PaperCut to consolidate the information from all linked queues and report on the printer as a whole. It also allows the print queues to dynamically use the configuration of this printer. If any print queues do not automatically link, you must manually link the print queue to the printer. And the linking process works as follows. First of all, the, the first print queue that's added on a computer with a direct print monitor installed creates a printer in the printer list. 
If a print queue on any other computer with a direct print monitor installed has the same IP address or host name as the printer, then a new printer is not created and the print queue is linked to the printer that we created in the first step. Now here's an important tip. You should always use a consistent IP address or host name for print queues to ensure that they're automatically linked. This process is automatic and works in most of cases. There might, however, be some rare situations where a print queue does not automatically link to the printer or a print queue is incorrectly linked to the printer. In these cases, you just need to manually link or unlink the relevant print queues. During the preparation stage, you determined your print cost model, and now it's time to enter that cost model into PaperCut. When you set the pricing on the template printer, any new printers installed and displayed in PaperCut will use these prices. However, these prices will not automatically apply to any printers already in the system. To apply the cost model to existing printers, in the Actions menu, select Copy Settings to Other Printers. In the target area, select the checkbox next to each printer you want to apply the cost model, or click Select All. In the Settings area, select the Cost Settings checkbox. Click Copy. If PaperCut hasn't imported the printers from the server, restart the PaperCut Print Provider service. PaperCut offers a wide range of reports that can be manually generated or scheduled and automatically emailed or sent to a file folder. PaperCut reports on the print usage of the law firm. And here's a recommended list of reports to use as a starting point. The Shared Account Printing Summary. Now, this is the total charges against the shared account for a given period. There's also the Shared Account Printing Logs. This is each print job charged against each shared account for a given period. And then user printing summary, the print usage by individuals and can help encourage better printing price, uh, policies. Now, as mentioned, you can schedule a report to go to a shared folder on the network, or it can be emailed. Pick the type of report you need. Give it a title. Use filters if needed. Choose your format, either PDF or CSV, and then schedule it to run automatically on a daily, weekly, fortnightly monthly, quarterly, or yearly timetable. Add your recipients or put in the path to the share and click Add. Your next scheduled report time will show up at the bottom with a name of the report and an indicator of when it will process next. And then finally, run some tests to know that everything is working okay. Testing is an important step with any software deployment project. Use this test plan to verify that the setup and charging rules work as expected and that print jobs are charged appropriately. You will want to verify that the user client automatically opens on a login and displays all of the available shared accounts. Verify that printers are correctly configured and supported by PaperCut and charging works as expected by running a few jobs. You know, print a single page document, a multi page document. Print a color document with images, and if advanced charging options are used, test other attributes such as grayscale and or duplex discounts. Verify that all print jobs are being calculated correctly, recorded against the right printer, charged to the right user, and their account balances are being adjusted accordingly. And then verify user management and related tasks work as expected by checking that user accounts are automatically created from domain users, making sure you can reach the admin console from a standard web browser, and ensure that all users and groups have access to the correct shared accounts. You know, during the first week of running PaperCut, these tests should be run daily with regular inspection of PaperCut's application logs for error messages or reported problems. This will also familiarize yourself with the application, too. So after this has been completed, you're ready for a fully functioning, go-alive version of PaperCut that actually requires little maintenance once set up, especially if you follow best practices. At ACDI, we want to provide more of this information to help you get comfortable with PaperCut and realize that it's not just for education. 
You have a lot of tools that admins of law firms are looking for, including integrations. ACDI does already have many integrations created for a lot of the popular legal software packages, PC Law, Juris, and many others. Talk to your ACDI representative about the needs that your law firm has, and we'll be glad to help you talk about paper cut in the legal industry. Thanks for joining. We'll get to your questions in just a moment. For ACDI, I'm Doc Balgie.